Welcome to my Big IP LTM training series. My name is Trevor. This video is going to go in depth into what the components of iRules are. The first component to all iRules is the event declaration. An example of an event declaration is when HTTP request. The keyword of when is used to identify the event declaration inside of the iRule. Since iRules are an event driven language, what that means is code isn't executed for all requests passing through 100% of the time. iRules function based off of the logic of when the event occurs, the iRules then triggered, and the tickle code inside of the iRule is executed on that request. Throughout the time a connection flows through the Big IP, it traverses through various states or events. Each of these events happen in a very specific order, and they depend on the type of connection that's flowing through the platform. So, to summarize, the event determines which moment the iRule is going to trigger as the data is processed through the Big IP. The second component to an iRule is the tickle control structure. The tickle control structure is a statement that allows you to make a logical comparison, and based off of the output from that comparison, a specified action occurs. The different types of tickle control structures that exist are if, else if, else statements, switch statements, and class statements. You can use one or the other depending on how many different values you're logically comparing and acting on. The third component to iRules are the operators. Operators compare two arguments in the expression. The most common operators used in iRules are contains, matches, equals, starts with, ends with, and matches regex. An example of an operator is in this iRule right here. The statement says if HTTP status contains, this is the operator, contains 404, then HTTP redirect to this domain. Another example of an operator would be if you had a statement that defined if the HTTP URI ends with .css, what that would do is the operator in this statement is ends with, and it's going to compare the URI and see if it ends with .css. If it does, the action that you specify after that would occur. The fourth component to iRules is the tickle command. With these, what you're defining to the big IP is exactly the value or action that you're referencing inside of your tickle code. HTTP colon colon URI, for example, returns the URI of the HTTP request. HTTP colon colon redirect will redirect an HTTP request or response to a specified URL. The big IP currently has 80 different tickle statement commands that you can reference just regarding HTTP traffic alone. So that shows you that there's an enormous amount of flexibility regarding tickle commands and what they offer. I hope that iRule structure makes a little bit more sense now after this video. Thank you for watching. Please leave any questions or comments you have in the comment section below. Also go to my website trevortraining.com for more information and more videos.